Now uh, it's time to share our joys and concerns. If you have any joys and concerns, let us share it, please. I want to say you, Sehe Bong Mani Padiseo. You know what that means? Sehe Bong Mani Padiseo. That is uh, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Today is the uh, New Year of lun lunar calendar. So, uh, in Asian people and also, you know, my uh, country, Korea, they celebrate New Year. So I, I'm going to call to my mother and my sister and brothers uh, this evening uh, there. Just repeat after me. 새해 복 많이 받으세요. Excellent. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody who would like to share any concerns? Yes. Yes. My wa lovely wife, Patty, she uh, had a, some sort of a stroke on Wednesday and was over here at Wilson Hospital for three nights. And miracles are still happening. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we have come before you again this morning. We come as we trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. And with your blood, please wash us and cleanse us. For this past week, we confess we live without you in our own will. We have lived in greed and selfishness. There have been many failures and despairs. There are many scars and pains as well. Sometimes we hurt others, and we confess our sins to you today. Please have mercy on us. Forgive us with your precious blood. We want to wholly worship you with a clean heart. We always want to give you our best, worshiping you with our truth and spirit. So please open the doors of heaven this morning and send us the heavenly blessings and your graces. And through this worship, re reveal us your glory. And please speak to us and teach us. <laughs> Give us your word and your message. Help us to fix what we need to fix. Cast away what we need to cast away. Let us have a new resolution. Shine your heavenly light on us today. Touch each of us and heal our wounds and scars, both of our minds and bodies. Let us love one another, forgive one another, serve one another. So let us be the example of true love to this world. Let our church be a lighthouse to shine upon this dark world. Lord, there are those who are sick. Please touch them and heal them. Those who are shut in members who can't come here, but please be with them and based upon them same grace. 
that you're going to bestow upon us. And also, we thank you for your healing power to those, uh, to the one who uh, is the sincere your uh, uh, daughter. We thank you for that. Your touching and healing and presence with us, and sing to you and glorify you and worship you. Please reign over our worship and receive all the glory. And we continue with the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time of offering. Please, ushers, come. Pray in unison together. Gracious God, like Moses, we often seem veiled in our daily lives when given an opportunity to share your splendor. Our minds become focused on the temporal, materialistic. We ashamedly view the world as our king and not your kingdom. Lift the veils on our souls so our thought and deed are transformed desire to your calling and vision. We offer ourselves to you here and now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As the choir makes their way down, you can turn in your pew Bibles to page 871. We'll be reading from the book of Mark, chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. It's a very familiar passage. I would ask that you please stand if you are able for the reading of the gospel. We will read this responsively, page 871. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the car, they took him to the and and a great storm of wind arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already filling with water, with filling. But he was in the storm, and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? And together. And they were filled with awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and sea obey him? This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let us greet each other saying, pray instead of worrying. Can we do that? Pray instead of worrying, please. Pray 
instead of worrying. Pray instead of worry. Thank you. Pray instead of worry. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> Pray instead of worrying. Thank you. Jesus asked his disciples, why are you so afraid? A pastor whom I know very, uh, whom I respect very much, suffered from a kidney infection. And he was infected with the gallstones in his kidney. And this infection is very painful. And I remember what he said, Pastor Kim, it hurts so much that I cannot read the Bible or focus on prayer. I just think about how much it hurts. And I could understand him. All humans are alike, whether it is pastor or lay leaders or any of you, we are all weak and humans. In today's scripture, it says that the disciples were greatly afraid. They came across the storm and faced death in the sea. And Jesus was in the boat as well. But the disciples still were afraid and trembling. You can ask, how can they be afraid when they are with, with Jesus? However, I think they can be afraid. All people get afraid and tremble whenever they face a huge crisis or difficulty. We do have a faith, but we also shake a lot. We must be rational and reasonable. We must be logical and scientific. If not, we cannot be successful in this world. But we must take caution. If we extremely go toward rationalism and reason, then it is easy to lose faith without knowing ourselves. When we make judgment about something, we must do so with reason and logic. But also, we need faith to stand before God. Why? The result of a lack of faith bears a serious errors in our lives. I was raised in good family and received a good education. And I received a rational education. But I did not learn the right faith. On the outside, I pretend I have faith, but inside, Actually, I did not. So I wandered around a lot in this world. Others might not have known, but I wandered deeply inside myself. So my life was difficult. It was filled with anxieties. And I want to be honest with you. When I was young, I did not learn faith in the church. I did not learn the right way of faith through the church members. I was raised in a church in the countryside when I was little and young, and when I came to church, the members always in conflict and dispute, and they were divided into groups. Whenever church meetings was about to take place, the people were always worried. The faces of the adult had no trace of God's grace. They only spoke words of discouragement and disbelief in the church meetings. And this was the image of the church uh, during my youth. Of course, I received a religious education in Sunday school, and this was only the outer layer. I did not learn the true faith, genuine faith. I have not met of true person of faith and person of God. So God was not alive to me. God was here, but God wasn't here. So because I grew up seeing disbelief, I did not have faith myself, living faith. So I always encountered many, many difficulties and problems while I live in this secular world. I did not have the strength of faith to win over the world, to win over 
the power of darkness. I wandered around with disbelief. I had no peace. I was confused, lost many things. While I was wandering, I got to meet people of faith. And this was truly by grace of God. As I had fellowship with them, I gained great, great strength. Yes, these people were not even pastors. They were just normal lay people. They loved the Lord with all their hearts. They were people of prayer. They were people of worship. They were people of who shared the gospel and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. They are witnessing, witness. Through them, I got to learn faith, the real faith. When I saw them, I thought and realized God is alive. God really answers our prayers. All I need to do is trust and obey and pray. Let's look at today's scripture. Let's look at verse 36. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. And verse 37 says, A furious storm came up, and the waves broke, broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Verse 38 says, Jesus was in the storm, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Verse 39, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. A very important answer is shown here. The scripture talks about the waves and the winds becoming completely calm and still. Who is he? He is the Messiah, the Son of God. He has been God since the beginning of creation. Philippians chapter 2, 6 says, He was in the form of God. In John, Jesus says that He is one with the Father God. He is God. He is the creator God who created the heavens and earth with one word. He is the God of love, God of passion, so who come, came to us in the form of a human being. We are serving this amazing master, amazing Lord and Savior, Jesus. This is the place, this is the house of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we do not need to be afraid, my friend. We do not need to be in disbelief. What do you think ministry is? Is the pastor the only one who does ministry? No. All servants of the Lord do ministries. You know, through the Sunday school, or through each committee, or through uh, as a being a member who support the ministry of the Lord and pray for that, you are all God's ministries. But what do you think this ministry is about? I think ministry is a fight against disbelief. Fight against worry and fear. As I did my ministry, I encountered many events, many problems, many troubles. It occurs in, in the middle of doing the ministries. Each time, many people said many things. All of their words sounds like very reasonable. They were, they were all words that made sense. But those words of disbelief pressed my neck, yanked my feet at times. Those words seemed right and seemed to work out, but later on did not have any fruits. I discover an answer. Yes, Jesus is the Christ. Jesus is the Lord. He is the master of all things. He is the master of our lives and master of our church life. He is the Son of God. He is the one who is living and serve our life problems right at this moment. 
So I kneel down to him and pray like the disciples, Teacher, Lord, don't you care if we drown? I love the ocean. During my ministry, when things got so hard, I was almost ready to burn out. No one can understand the heart of the pastor, yes. Sometimes even my wife, Eunice, cannot understand. I, won, I went to, then I went to the ocean in Long Island when I was in New York City by myself. And strong winds blew and great waves crashed against the shore. And stood up at the tip of the water and looked at the waves. I stood up there for a long, long time. Then I watched the waves and watched again and watched. Then I had a realization deep in my heart. Those huge waves which rush upon me all fall apart into foam on the seashore and disappear in the end. I realized this. Even waves turn into foam and disappear. All things just pass. All problems will pass. What is there to be afraid of? That was my realization. So prayer began in my heart. The Lord gave me true peace. He gave me new strength. Our Lord always makes the waves calm. He always stops the storm still. Our Lord is the son of the living God. He's the creator God and the almighty and the redeemer. He is our savior. Teaching this to your children is Sunday school. If we do not teach this mighty loving God, then your children will lose their faith. Singing this is choir and praise team. Proclaiming this is the sermon on the pulpit. And letting others know about this is the mission and ministry. Our church is weak, yes. Look around the pew this morning, how empty seats are around. Our church is weak in finance also. We are weak in memberships. But I want you to say this, do not worry. Because the master of our church is us, not us, is Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid, but believe. Do not be worried, but pray. Jesus asked, why are you so afraid? You still have no faith, my friend. Put your trust in Jesus and hope we become a church of faith, church of prayer. Pray for revival of a church. Do not be afraid. Do not be worried. Pray for church revival because the God is alive. Amen. He's a living God. Pray for the mission and ministry and evangelism. Although the disciples were afraid, they did something good, waking Jesus up from his sleep. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Let us wake the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us become a church of prayer. Dear my friends, I want to suggest one thing this morning. As a pastor of Sarah Jane Johnson Church, I suggest one thing for the future of our church. And this is the most easy way and simple way. I ask you pray for church once a day. It is possible to choose, you know, if it is possible, choose a specific time and then pray. I suggest you practice the one, one, one prayer. Pastor, what is one, one, one prayer? It is an exercise of prayer. Pray for one minute, one o'clock, at one day, one each day. One day, one o'clock, one minute, one, one, one. I want you to pray with one heart. I strongly encourage you to practice in this one, one, one prayer movement. It is easy to forget. We, yes, we can, we are busy, then we easy to forget, but it is okay. Whenever you remember, start again the prayer. Pray for church, pray for the members, 
pray for our children, evangelism, mission, and all the church ministries. Just one, one, one. That's the most easy, and, and it's a privilege, and enjoying. The Lord is with you every day in the center of the, our lives. One o'clock, one minute, in one each day. Jeremiah 33 says, Call to me, and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things you do not know. John 14, 14, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. This is our Lord's promise. I hope you taste and experience the power of prayer, excitement of prayer, and I want you to receive his answers. Yes, we must be rational. We must be uh, reasonable. We must be logical and scientific. Along with these things, we must have the faith to stand before living God. When we walk the path of our lives, we meet many storms. We cannot survive with only our knowledge and experience. When the storm is blowing and the waves are crashing, what can we do with our only knowledge? But Jesus is, is on the boat. He's, he's on the boat of our lives. I hope you will wake him up, pray to him. Winds be quiet, waves be still. Yes, Jesus has a power. He has a power to calm the winds and the waves. Jesus once told his trembling and afraid disciples this. Peace, I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Do not be afraid. People are trembling with the fear of death. They are scared of death. But our Lord even solved our death problem. For God so loved the world, and he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have an eternal life. What, we, what will he give us? Eternal life. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, then you and your household will be saved. What will we earn? Salvation. Salvation. I will end my sermon. Who is on this boat? Jesus Christ, our Messiah, is on this boat. Then why are you so afraid, my friend? Dear my friend, Jesus is the Christ, Messiah, Son of the living God. And his name is Emmanuel, God with us. I hope we can focus, we can focus on Jesus Christ. I want your life to be focused on our Lord Jesus Christ. One, one, one. I hope you not forget our motto in year 2013, which is learn Jesus, enjoy Jesus, witness Jesus. I want to say again, this was a couple of weeks ago. That was my sermon. And then I give you the motto of 2013 is learn Jesus, enjoy Jesus, witness Jesus. Why are you so afraid? My Lord asks us. It is okay even if there are storms, waves, because our Lord is our master of our life, church life. Because Jesus Christ is with us, Emmanuel. We need to have a spiritual strength, yes. We need to recover the strength in faith, yes. We need to renew the faith that believes in Lord Jesus. Christ is the rock of our life. Christ is the foundation of our faith. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. 
upon Christ the solid rock I stand, or other ground is sinking sand, or other ground is sinking sand. Amen. Amen. The Lord speaks, winds be still, waves be calm. He is our Lord, creator of God. I hope you recover your faith this morning. I hope you renew your spiritual strength this morning. Do any of you have big storms in your lives? Are any great waves crashing against you? Your home, your children, your business, your school, your health? I bless you for all of these things to become calm and still in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, the mighty, mighty name, and the most precious loving gift from the Lord. And I bless you for this day to be the day of God's much, much blessings. Happy New Year, my friends. Let us pray. Father, there are so many times when big storms and great waves head our way. Please help us not to get discouraged. Let us come to you, Jesus, who is in the boat of our lives. Lord, let us be the ones to wake you up. Let us be the ones who pray. Father, bless us and fill us with your power of the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is... <clears throat> God will take care of you. Number 130, please. Hymn number 130, God will take care of you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, those who will not be afraid and trust and obey in the Lord, now and forever.